Hey everyone, so in this video, we're gonna go ahead and persist the user. So if we were to sign in right now, and then we look at our link here, we're signed in. If I were to refresh the page, and then look here again, we're signed out. So what we wanna do is we wanted to uh, keep our user logged in if we have a valid refresh token. So uh, what we'll do, if we open up our code, we need to make a few changes, and this will be inside of our authentication context. So right now, we'll add a new function at the very bottom of this page. And we'll go ahead and just copy this stuff, this right here, and then we'll go ahead and just paste this right down here. Um, okay, so it's gonna look like this. We're gonna call it something else. So I guess we'll call it check if user logged in. Would work, I guess. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this function and use effect. So every time this, this page loads, so whenever we're on any page of application, um, since this is our authentication context, it's going to run this function and check if the user is logged in. I mean, if they are, we'll go ahead and set the user and the access token so that the user stays logged in even after page refreshes or if we close the browser and come back. Um, if they have a valid token, it will still log them in. So first things first, let's go ahead and put this function inside of a use effect. So what we'll do here is we'll import use effect from React. And then down here, uh, I guess we'll put it below our router should be fine. We'll do use effect. And then we'll go ahead and put this in one line because we don't need to put it in uh, multiple lines here. But this will be a function. And what we can do here is we can do check if user logged in. Just call that function, put a comma, and put an empty dependency array. So this use effect will run uh, the first time the page loads. So the first time the page loads, we'll check if the user is logged in. If so, uh, if they are, we'll set our state values so that they're actually logged in. And uh, on our front end here, this will show as logged in. And we'll have the user saved in our state so we can access it for any of our uh, needs within the application. So let's go ahead and write this check if user logged in function. So inside this function, we want to do a couple different things. First, we want to go ahead and make an API request. API request to slash user, API slash user in front end or in uh, Next.js, we'll say. So our Next.js server side API routes, we're going to create one and call API slash user. And inside this function here, we're going to go ahead and check uh, for an access token. If we have a token, then we can go ahead and make a request to our back end and get the user data from our uh, localhost 8000 API slash user route. And then if we find valid data, we can go ahead and return that uh, from the API request, which will get inside of this function right here. And then we can go ahead and set our user and our access token from that return value. So that doesn't make sense. We will go over here step by step and hopefully it'll make sense then. So I'm gonna go put one more comment here and say set user and access token in state, just so we know what we're gonna be doing in this function. So we'll start with this first function or this first comment here and create an API request. So we can do like we did before, um, await axios.post. And this will go to, and actually what we're gonna do here is we're gonna wrap all this in a try catch. So actually let's do this. And then we'll put all this inside the try catch. That way if there's an error, we can catch that error like we have before and other things here um, with this sort of error catching that we've done before. Okay, so let's go ahead and just put all this inside this try here, just like that. We'll add a catch, error, and then we'll go ahead and put our error catching right here. So I'll go ahead and copy all this, um, all of this, I guess, down to there, and I'll paste that inside of here. Okay, now we'll go ahead and fix our indents, and then we'll jump back to our, our API request. Okay, so now with this, this API post request, we're gonna go ahead and go to HTTP colon, and we'll go to localhost port 3000 since we're going to this uh, API folder um, right here. So we'll do API, uh, localhost 3000 slash API slash user. And we'll need to create that route here in a second. Uh, but once we get that user data back, uh, we can go ahead and set this to a variable. So we'll do a const and we'll restructure data from our Axios request like we normally do. And then down here, we can do set user and do data.user and then set access token data.access. Um, and then this will be our, our key value pairs of return and our JSON will be these two values. And so we'll set our user and access token using those values. And this will make more sense here in a second when we actually create that route. 
Um, but that's all this function needs to do. It just needs to go ahead and do that and set those two values. So let's go ahead now and create this route for our post request here. So I'll go to my API folder here. I'll create a new file and I'll save this as user.js. Um, user needs to match whatever we put um, inside of this right here. In our case, we're calling it user. Now, inside this user function here, uh, what we can do first is we need to import Axios so we can make requests from Axios. And we also need to import cookie so we can access our cookie saved as well. So from cookie. And then we'll go and export default async requests response. And then we'll go and do if request.method is equal to post. Um, if it's not equal to post, then we're going to go ahead and throw an error. So else. And we'll go ahead and add um, res.set header allow and pass an array of posts to say that we're only allowing post requests at this route. Do a res.status uh, 405.json and then we'll do a message and we'll do just method and request.method that method is not allowed. Okay, now with that set, we can go ahead and make our, our add our logic here inside of the if statement. So if that's true, what we want to do first is we want to check if there is a cookie. So if, or if there's not a cookie, I should say. So there's not a request dot headers dot cookie. So if we don't have a cookie, then we have nothing else to do. Let's go and just return a res dot status of 403. And then we'll go ahead and add a JSON message here. And we'll do message this equal to not authorized, uh, authorized like that. Okay. And outside of this if statement here, we can go ahead and add a try catch. So we'll put our Axios request in. So do a try catch, catch an error goes in there. Now inside this try catch here, first we want to get the access, uh, get the refresh token from our cookie. So we've already checked that there is one. So let's go ahead and get that now. So do a refresh. Um, we destruct refresh from cookie dot parse dot or no cookie dot parse and pass in request dot headers dot cookie to get that cookie. And then this cookie should return some key value pairs of all of our cookies. We should have one cookie on there called refresh. So we're gonna go ahead and destructure that from that those key value pairs to get the to get only the refresh token um, from our cookies. Next we go ahead and create a config for our request. This equals uh, headers, and this should look like our other configs we created before, except application slash JSON content type um, application slash JSON um, const body equals refresh const data equals um, wait axios.post and then we'll go ahead and go make a request to HTTP and we'll go to localhost 8000 slash API slash token slash refresh and we'll go and pass in our body and our config so what we're doing here is we're creating our headers for our requests and we're creating a body and so our body we're putting in this refresh token so we're getting a refresh token up here and we want to put that into our body of this request and then we're going to axios.post and we're going to localhost 8000 slash api slash token slash refresh and make sure we have a chairling slash at the end of this route because it requires it in our django rest framework so uh, we take a look at the previous requests that we've made in Asomnia, you'll see what we're doing here. So if you look at our refresh route, we made a, re uh, a request to API slash token slash refresh. We pass in a JSON body of our refresh token, and then we have our content type headers that we require there. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to return either a new access token or this error over here saying it's invalid and expired. Um, if it returns a valid request, what we'll get, I can go ahead and... and show that here by logging in a user so i'll grab this refresh token i've logged in the user got a valid token 
We'll put that in a request. So we have a valid refresh token. We'll get back this access token. So that's just what we're trying to get. And if it's not valid, if I were just to remove some characters or something and hit send, um, we get this one say it's invalid or expired. So if we get this error, it's going to go ahead and just jump down to our catch and throw that error. Uh, if we have a valid token, if I undo those changes, we'll have a object here with a key of access and then our access token. So we can go ahead and, and that will be what our data is. So it'll be data.access in this case, if we have a valid uh, token. So what we can do with that valid token is we can check if data and data.access, which there should be one. Uh, if we have this data here, we're gonna go ahead and return a cons user config. And what this will have is a headers. And inside this headers here, we want to go ahead and put an authorization header. And we want to use that token we just got. So we'll do bearer space plus data.access to use that access token we just got. And then we're going to go ahead and make a request using this user config. We're going to make a request to that API slash user route. So looking at our routes we have available here, we have a get user by token where we pass in that token like we just did. And if I go ahead and grab that valid token, so I'll grab, um, grab this one right here. And we'll go into the get user by token. If I put that valid token here, and send that request, uh, we get back our user data. And so that's what we're trying to do here. So we've created the headers with that authorization token. So let's go ahead and make that request. So we'll do a const data. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this as we already have a data named earlier. I'm gonna rename this to be user data, just be explicit with the naming. And then I'm gonna go ahead and await, await axios.post or dot get, uh, because in this request here, we're making a get request, you can see here. So we'll do a dot get, we're gonna go to that route, which is HTTP uh, local host port 8000 slash API slash user. And then we'll pass in our user config to use that token in our headers. And we could go ahead and check again for this, but we really don't need to because if there's an error, it'll just jump down into this catch errors function, um, which we need to set up here in a second, but um, it'll jump down there if there's an error. So I'm not going to go ahead and check for this, this user data. I'm just going to go ahead and, and return it if it's valid. So if status or, or sorry, res. <clears throat> so res dot status 200. If we have a good request, we'll send it to a response back. It's in a JSON request body or response body of user colon user data and then access colon access token. So we're sending back a body here with two key value pairs, one of user and one of access. If you look at our authentication context here, um, what we're doing here is we're setting our user using user and access. So this is our two key value pairs that we're calling in this check if user logged in function. And then what we can do is inside of this else here, so we'll create an else after this if, do an else, and then we'll just do a res.status of 500. If this runs and something went wrong, so you send back an error, so we'll do res.status.json, and our message will just be uh, something went wrong. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our errors down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this in from a previous one because these are all the same. Our error catching doesn't really change. So I'm gonna to go to my register route and just copy all of this right here. Come back here and paste this right there. Uh, I'll delete these comments just to clean it up here. And I'll get rid of some of these console errors for now. Uh, we can bring them back if we need to debug something, but just to clean this all up, I'll get rid of all this stuff here. Okay, let's go ahead and fix the indents now. Okay, let's go ahead and save that now. Let's check our console for any errors. Um, right now it looks like we're good. Uh, I think that should be it. So now 
with this function, we should be returning this res that says 200 with our user and our access token if we have a valid request. If not, we'll go ahead and run this error catching right here. It'll just return a 401 or an error or, or whatever based off of what error we got here. Um, so let's go ahead and add to our authentication context. So we're doing all that, returning that data inside this data object. We're then using the set user function to set our user from that data and our access token. And with these two things set, that logs us in in our front end. So that's what we need to set to be logged in. Um, and I think that should be it. We're calling that function inside the use effect. So it should be running that automatically as soon as this page loads. Let's go ahead and save this file. Let's come back here. Um, oh, I have an issue with my JSON. I forgot to put the curly braces. Let's see here. What, what file is that in? I'm in our user file. I might have done that a couple times. Um, let's see here. This one is not wrong. Let's go ahead and put curly braces around this. Um, that one right there is good. That one's good. That one's good. That might have been the only issue. Let's go ahead and save that and try this again. Okay, let's go ahead now and sign in. So if I sign in here and I come back here, I'm logged in. If I refresh the page and I look at this again, I am not signed in. So it looks like we might still have an error somewhere. Let's see what might be going on there. Uh, it looks like right here, access token is not defined. Hmm access token what did I do wrong so let's take a look at let's see here I did not define access token anywhere um, what did I mean to put there I meant to put Let's see here. So, oh, I meant to put data.access, not access token, because our access token is saved there. Let's go ahead and change that to data.access. Let's go ahead and try that again. So I come here. Um, there we go. So now I'm signed in automatically because it found a valid refresh token. If we were to sign out now, refresh the page, I'm still signed out because we removed that token when we sign out. If I sign back in now, I look at here, I'm signed in, if I refresh the page, look here, I'm still signed in because we still have a valid token. Uh, I can click around and it should still work, it should still be signed in. Okay, good. So it's all working now like it should be. And that is it, really it for this video. I just wanted to get that working. Uh, we had all of our login, log out, register stuff working, but we weren't staying logged in. So with that change, we should now stay logged in as long as we have a valid token. And that is really it for most of the big login, log out, authentication functions. Uh, the big thing now that's missing though, is if we go to put a bunch of random data in here to log in, we're not getting any error messages showing up on here. Uh, so that'll be the, the next and probably the last step for our authentication of this application is to show some error when we when we don't log in correctly. Uh, right now, it's just not doing anything. We want to go ahead and like show some sort of error so the user knows that that they put something in wrong. Um, but that will be the last step in the next video. Uh, but that will be it for now. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.